Hey you guys, welcome back to my table of three. We're in my kitchen today and I'm going to show you um, to cook one of my favorite e soups. I'm going to show you how to, if I can speak correctly, but um, it's one of the latest recipes on my blog. It is a low calorie, low fat, well I don't know about calories, we'll check that later. I'll put the macros up if anybody's interested, but it is low fat. It is higher carb, that's why it qualifies as a Trim Healthy Mama E. So, simple ingredients, there's only four or five ingredients, count the seasonings. I'm going to show you how to do that in your Instapot, so you can have a great E soup. It's great with um, Trim Healthy Mama. If you eat sourdough bread, it would be great with um, some of that approved sourdough bread. You could put chicken in it if you're looking to do, um, get more protein. You can do like chicken breast, baked chicken breast on the side. Um, but if you're doing vegan, you could always just have like a protein shake um, with it or even add some protein, unflavored protein to the soup. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to make it basic like I have it on the, on the, remind me, I need to grab coconut milk. But I'm just going to do it basic like I have on the, uh, on my blog. I'll put the link to all the ingredients and all the steps below. I'm not going to tell you measurements. Um, because I don't want to forget any so I'm just going to show you the ingredients and talk a little bit about it show you how to do the instant pot and then again I'll link it the recipe link in the bottom um, description area down here so that you'll be able to follow it and get all the measurements without my crazy mom brain messing it up so let's step in I'm going to change the angle of my camera and show you guys how to make this quick and easy low fat trim healthy mama butternut squash soup in our instant pot so let's get to it Okay guys, I think you can see this. I did spare you guys um, all the chopping, but basically this is a large butternut squash um, and I just cubed it up. It doesn't really even matter how big your pieces are. You don't want them to be huge, but you just want to chop them up. So I just peeled the um, butternut squash with the regular vegetable peeler, just my old one that I've had. Oh my word. I think my mom gave me this when I got married and it's been uh, about 14 years ago, so I just um, chopped off the ends, stood it on its top, sliced it down, cleaned out the seeds with my handy dandy ice cream scoop, as you can see. Then I just chopped it up carefully. They're a little bit hard to chop up. Don't let it intimidate you. They are really good. Them being a hard is a good thing because it means they're hardy. Um, they're called winter squash because they grow naturally. Um, you can grow them through fall and they're very hard so that means they would grow them and they would last them through the winter and through the fall months without going bad so it's a good stable crop that you can grow and then it'll keep really well long term in a dark cool place so and then i have here if you can see that it's just um a red onion that i've chopped up over here i have celery that i've chopped up um, in this bowl, I have nutritional yeast and then some salt, pepper, garlic powder, a couple other things, I think. That's why I'm going to tell you to look in the burnt, because I followed my own <laughs> recipe to make sure everything's in there. And then I use um, vegetable broth. We are trying to keep this um, vegan. Um, today is the day we try and eat meatless, or we do eat meatless on Wednesday and Friday. So we're keeping this with, I'm just going with vegetable broth. If you want to use chicken broth, or turkey broth or whatever you have you can totally do that just make sure since it's an E you want it to be fat free um, and like you want it to be fat free um, just realize this one didn't say fat free but eh, just pretend it did and then for the end you will need some light coconut milk unsweetened coconut milk just to stir in to make it a little bit creamy at the end so that's it, you guys. Now, of course, you can change the seasonings after you look at the recipe. If there's something your family don't like, um, anything like that, you can definitely change it. I will tell you one thing right now that I'm going to do different than the recipe. It does call for you to saute um, the onions and the celery a little bit, but you don't have to do that. It can You can release some of those flavors if you like to. Make sure you guys can see in here. But you can also skip that step. That makes it even faster so I am just going to pour all these veggies in there so pray I don't make a mess okay so this is just all going in there that's my onions uh, the uh, butternut squash dropping a couple of chunks there so um, mine is a five quart instapot that I'm using right now you guys can definitely double if you need to in a larger instapot um, but this just about fills this little five quart up 
um, and does an amazing job for the three of us. So, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see. Put this over there. All of the stuff, the goodies in there. Now I'm just going to take the spices and the nutritional yeast. Just going to dump that in there. And then I'm going to pour the broth over that. If you're going to use protein, like um, whey protein, unflavored uh, vegan, if you're going to use a plant-based protein, I would try and get one that was very neutral flavored. You would add, I wouldn't add it now. I would add it after you cook this and right before you blend it. Okay, so that's the uh, whey protein or the plant protein, whichever one you use. So, that was... Um, just about a little bit. Let me add a little bit more water because I don't think I had enough broth as what was called for. So basically you can follow the directions like I said on the link below my video here and that's going to give you all you need to make this soup. I just did not have the right amount of chicken stock it looked like. So I got that stirred up as you can see. Now I am going to place my let me wipe everything down my lid on the Instapot. I'm going to turn the knob here. Raise it up just a little bit to seal. Then I'm going to see if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hit manual, which if you can't, I'll talk it through. Um, I'm going to hit manual and I'm just going to do it for 10 minutes. That is all it's going to take. Of course, it'll build pressure and then it'll count down the 10 minutes and we'll come back when that's done um, counting down. I'm going to let the pressure release for probably about 5 minutes and then I'll come back and do, a, and do a rapid release. I won't do that on camera and then I'll come back then and show you guys how to finish up this um, butternut squash, okay? Alright guys, so the Instapot has counted down the 10 minutes. I did a rapid release after 5 minutes of a natural release and now I'm going to show you what the squash um, or the butternut squash soup looks like when you open the lid and so you guys can see the celery and the onions and the butternut squash it's all very very soft so the next part is you're going to take your immersion blender blender or hand blender um, and just puree this up you know you could do it as um pureed as you like or you can leave some chunks i do it pretty smooth but i do i think that's how i'm going to leave a few chunks but we'll see now if you don't have one of these stick blenders um, which you can get off amazon i'll try and link uh, one like this down below because this is a kitchen aid i don't think it's very much like 20 24 dollars something like that so i'll try and link one like it in the description below description but if you don't have this you can do this in a blender just be very careful because when you blend hot um soups and things in your blender it has a chance that it could blow up so just do a little bit at a time and then pour it back in there so I'm going to do this really quick see how easy this is you can see 10 minutes was more than enough for that butternut squash I wouldn't do it um, any longer or any less so let me see what that looks like well, I actually think I got them all, so that's fine. We'll just make it with no lump. So, if you want yours to be a little bit more um, of a bite to them, you can do it about eight minutes if you like to, and then you can blend it up. Just be a little bit more careful so that you, if you want chunks, oh, there's some right there. I thought I felt some. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, and so you remember before, the only thing you need to do to finish this is if you want a dairy-free version, you can use this light coconut milk. Um, I'm going to put a cup in there now. Uh, if you don't mind the fat, you could use full fat coconut milk. I think it only gives it, I want to say, um, I'm going to show you guys the recipe nutrition in just a second. But with the light coconut milk, it has um, four fat grams for a cup and a half of the soup and 18 carbs. Um, and I think net carbs, no, 18 net carbs. So 26 carbs. Then you take out the fiber and it gives you 18 um, net carbs. So this is the E you can have, I think it's 25 to 40 or 45 that you can have carb wise in the E. So you can have this with, like I said, some sourdough bread or something like that. So I'm going to use the light coconut milk to keep it. And if you're going to have chicken breast or anything like that with it or 
maybe laughing cow cheese on your sourdough bread I would definitely use the light coconut milk that way you had another fat gram or something to play with um, if you want to use heavy cream and don't matter about the um, don't care about the fat or you know you could just use a cup of heavy cream and so that would be even more delightful the way I serve this is that I um uh, I'm just going to put a, a cup and a half as a serving um, put it in a bowl and you can top it with a little bit more coconut milk on the top to make it pretty maybe a sprinkle of some pepitas or um, pumpkin seeds um, like that or some sourdough croutons just whichever you want and your family would like um, this soup freezes well if you want to freeze it leave the coconut milk out let it cool completely and then freeze it in the portions you want if you want to do a freezer prep meal um, before you cook it, I did put that in my recipe post. I won't go into details there so we can keep this thing short. So that is it. I hope you enjoy this recipe. If you've tried it already or if you're going to try it, let me know what you think about when you do. And I'll see you guys next time on, uh, in my kitchen. See you guys later.